Hello everyone, this is Ingame Arts with another boxing, another offline product gaming review. This is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD from the Nintendo Switch. To jump right into it, my physical copy came with the update version 1.00 on the cartridge. So this is the base vanilla version of the game. Now I've mentioned this multiple times in my unboxing videos for the Switch, but if you do not know, sometimes Nintendo reprints physical copies of their games to include some of the free updates that they have released through updates onto the cartridge so sometimes you can get a new brand new game from Nintendo and it can be a more updated version of the game on the cartridge that you didn't have to download but this version here is the 1.00 so this is the base vanilla version that probably a lot of people have now jumping into the offline experience of the game for me the offline experience ran great I had no issues or problems other than some minor frame rate drops that's about it but overall I never had any real issues no corruptions no problems or anything so the overall overall the offline experience ran smoothly and played great now I have had few people ask me about the handheld experience I do not play my switch in handheld mode I can't play handhelds they hurt my eyes so I only play the switch games by the using the dock station it's the only reason I bought the switch if it was just strictly a handheld device I never would have gotten it so anytime I cover any of my videos for switch it will only be exclusively for the dock version of the game now on to the product as I just said the product seems to be pretty good it's the uh, it's not the most updated version of the game there were updates available but it did run great and had no issues for the base vanilla version. So if, if you have the base vanilla version of the game, you shouldn't have any worries or problems. Granted, there could be a more updated version of the cartridge of the game. But if you do not get it, at least you know the base version of the game will be no issues at all. Now, in terms of the product and everything. Now, as you know that this is the Legend of Skyward Sword HD. So it's got more things changed than the base Wii version of the game which I never actually played. This is, is the first time I ever played Skyward Sword. They have a few fixes they've done to compare to the original. They fixed the tutorial from what I understand it used to be dragged on. They fixed your uh, help a partner fee to not to be such a annoying person constantly trying to give you hints and suggestions and just let you play at your own pace. As well as they now include the ability to play with the controller or the plural controller. So you do not need to use motion controls when you play the game. Overall, the product it was a really good handled. The HD looks good. The game looks great. Then, overall, it was just a generally good product, and I highly recommend it, even if you get the base vanilla version of the game. Now, for me, all for my final thoughts of the game. As I just mentioned in the video, this was the first time I ever played Skyward Sword as I personally hate motion controls and the Nintendo Wii is one of my least favorite Nintendo consoles just because of the Wii motion controls. So I was really happy to finally step into Skyward Sword and to be perfectly blunt, I am a big fan of the Legend of Zelda series. I generally just have a good time with all of them. Now, as I said, it's first time playing Skyward Sword, uh, Skyward Sword uh, compared to like Twilight Princess and I played a little bit of Wind Waker and previous ones like Leak to the Pass and, and then we got the Breath of the Wild though the, the motion controls they have which I used all the joystick I used nothing but the pro controller worked great some of the things were a little annoying like then you have Link has to stop moving before you can swing so some of that delay could annoy some people as well as that you have to constantly hold the L1 button to rotate the camera. If you let go of the L1 button, your rotating camera, which is your right joystick, will swing your sword. This can be hit and miss sometimes. Sometimes you'll be like holding the L1 button and you think you're holding it, but sometimes Link will pull out a sword. Not a big deal, but it is annoying that constantly have to hold, hold the L1. But after extended play, I played it like 40 hours. I almost got to in a habit, and I forget I even am holding the L1 button because I constantly used it. But it is just one of those little annoyances. Uh, other than that, the game, other than little issues like I mean, other people have complained, Fee, even though they cut her down to not to be as annoying, I still found her to be annoying in the game. She still constantly bugged me for the most minute things in the game. And the few times I ever needed her help, she wasn't helpful at all. Which is another point. This is also a point about just Nintendo games and uh, all around. And another game I'm covering, going to be covering soon from Nintendo, which I'll talk about in that game. But 
Nintendo has a really good, notorious time when it comes to constantly holding the player's hand throughout their games. But through this, which is true, but sometimes I have found that they are just really bad at completely giving no support or help in some dire times in the game. Like, the few times I needed Fee's help, she was not helpful, and that was really annoying. Even though she's designed to be a mechanic to help me when I'm stuck, she was not helpful at all. Example, the first dungeon, yes, the very first dungeon I got stuck on, and it was because of this eye door. You only had one hint for this door, and it was that it likes to follow pointy objects. I don't know about other people, when I read that, I thought that it meant I need to distract the eyeball with my sword or a bow or something pointy, and then try to attack the eyeball. That's what I got out of it. No, as a helpful hint in the beginning here, what they're telling you to do is that you need to rotate your swinging sword, rotate it in a circle to get the eyeball to be dizzy. I don't know how anybody would ever come to that conclusion without just constantly spamming something or doing something to try to figure out how to open this door. And there was a couple other moments in the game where it's just completely just off the wall, no help at all, no explanation of what you need to do. And other times the game will be constantly holding your hand going through it. And that's another thing about Skyward Sword, the dungeon explorations are very linear. I've always felt that Legend of Zelda was always about having this big dungeon, a big world, and you could always find and hidden stuff, and it didn't really come that off that way. It felt very linear, and they're constantly guiding me to the, the direction. I never really felt like I was exploring the unknown. I felt like I was just being led on a, uh, a linear path, compared to other Legend of Zelda games. As well as this one includes the flying the bird mode, where you can fly your bird. I didn't really care for this as I found it to be a chore and not very interesting to the overall experience of the game as it really doesn't provide anything. Seriously, the game has very little to do with flying the bird as the mechanic of this game. All it's really used for is to go back to the HUD world which is where you go buy stuff, upgrade your equipment and so on and to fly into the next region. That's all it's for. I don't know if they had it just for inclusion to be a clever way to load in levels in terms of transitions of going in area as you're flying slow, slowly to the location it's loading the level that's fine but the flying the bird moment was just complete boring it reminded me a lot of wind waker where you f drive the boat around i i loved exploring the dungeons and areas but i didn't like riding the boat it was just boring much like the bird it's not interesting or involving for the player and it just felt very shoehorned in there with no real design around it but other than that Legend of Zelda was a Skyward Sword. It's still a tried and true Legend of Zelda game, and it did a very good job. They had some interesting boss fights. They did a pretty good job. Some of them are very vague in what you need to do, but some of them were really fun, especially the final boss fight. Other than the giant, like, mouth monster boss fight, that was a little cumbersome fight, but... Uh, Overall, I still had an amazing time. It's still a Legend of Zelda game. It's a blast to play through. There's no way I could play a Legend of Zelda game without trying to 100% it and find all, all the stuff and do all the stuff. It's still a fun time. Good story. Good family-friendly oriented and the exploration and so on. It's still a phenomenal game. I won't say it's probably my most favorite Legend of Zelda game as I simply just enjoyed other ones like Twilight Princess, Link to the Past, or Breath of the Wild, but it's still a phenomenal game and even if you get the base vanilla version of 1.00, the product is good, the game is good, it's overall a phenomenal game. Is it the best Legend of Zelda? I don't think so, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad Legend of Zelda game either. I still recommend it for your Switch, for the product, and the software. So like always, I try to leave links down in the description if you're interested to copy. I totally tell you to check it out, even if you get the base vanilla version of the game. So like always, I'll see you guys in the next unboxing video. Bye bye!